the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth dear brethren many of the believers who are not able to grow up in the knowledge of bible doctrine is purely because they have not known that whether they have been saved or not many of the denominations which we meet they constantly proclaim are you saved and if you are not going to secure your salvation you shall be lost the passage over there in philippians work out the works fitting unto your salvation is been really misapplied to the people they think you should work a work that could be meet unto your salvation that could be right unto your salvation no you cannot work out your own salvation salvation is by faith alone in christ alone and salvation is a grace provision for the sinful mankind that's what we can define grace grace is an unmerited favor of god graciously bestowed upon the sinful mankind where with you don't earn it you don't deserve it and you don't work for it that is what the grace is and in grace salvation has been provided by the saving work of our lord and savior jesus christ on the cross therefore the believer no longer looks unto sin but he looks unto christ and that is what you and i have been noted over here even the unbelievers have been given this privilege to believe upon christ by faith alone in christ alone no gimmicks no tricks no x y z friends only by faith by faith by faith and this faith alone in christ alone will cause us our salvation to be eternally secured it doesn't require for you any water baptism so that you can tell you are securing your salvation no no more works it is been by faith by pure faith and if you are want to take a baptism first you clearly know the definition of a baptism from the greek word meant to say baptizo so that the baptizo tells to you it is no longer the ship upon the ocean because the ship has been sunk into the ocean and it is the ocean that could be looking out so whenever you want to take a baptism now it meant to say into the kingdom of christ you are taken baptism and furthermore when you come out in the newness of life you are walking as per the rules and regulations of the polity of pre- religious of that great kingdom of Christ and that great kingdom of Christ is what you and I have been transferred and you have been called as a royal family of God and if this royal family of God is not been thoroughly maintained for you then you can never know what is your eternal security in Christ therefore dear brethren this positional approach what we are looking that every believer is in union with Christ Romans 8:1 Ephesians 1:3 to 6 and Jude 1 that if you go for a logical approach if God did the most for us while we were at sinners our enemies then it follows he will do much more than the most for us as a royal member family Romans 5:9 to 10 Romans 5:15 Romans 5:17 520 832 anthropomorphic approach the believer is held in god's hand and he will never let go psalms 3724 john 1028 experiential approach though we say we no longer believe god remains faithful for us because he is immutable second timothy 2 12 through 13 the family approach we are born into the royal family of god and can never be removed john 112 galatians 326 the body approach the head of the body christ can never say to any member of the body of believer that he does not need to come to us to the body of the 118 and you have the inner approach we have an inner approach which is incorruptible and unchanging waiting for us in heaven ephesians 111 first peter 14 through 5 and we have the sovereignty approach as well god's decision to keep us second peter 39 and jude 24 we have the sealing ministry of our god guarantee that the name of every believer remains in the book of life forever second corinthians 1 ephesians 1:13 ephesians 1:13 and second timothy 2:19 in comparison with revelation 20 that he has written and above all this we have one more thing which is quite essential because many of the more on your standing in the book of life they want to come and communicate the language because the greek tends 
also tells poet that various tenses of this pure and accessing vegetable means to believe once and for all lifetime, and the perfect tense of sozo in Ephesians 2, 8, 10, 9 means you are saved in the past with the result that you go on being saved forever. And what is this? This is salvation for a believer graciously granted in the place of God. But what have we done? We are doubting about the salvation, though we have been given the positional approach, positionally sanctified, logical approach, more than, much more than the most, anthropomorphic approach as per your human thinking, your experiential approach, you will say, no longer I believe in Christ, but God remains faithful, your family approach, because now you belong to the royal family of God, because your son also possesses the same DNA, you can't say now, telling to the point, that he is not my son, when you test, you find him that he is your son, that is what, when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have been given this imputed righteousness in grace. We now belong to that plus R. That plus R has been credited to our account. And we cannot say, no longer we are into that royal family. You are into that royal family, and plus R has been credited to you. And then the body approach. No body will say, I don't require hand, I don't require leg. Everything has been absolutely required. You know what, nowadays, if the kidney has been failed, they say, we have one more kidney to be supplemented by another person. They can't say, I can run my race without the two kidneys failed. Or I can run my race with one kidney. No, they want two. But there are cases where they run with one, but that is required. If that even one is not there, can the body tell, no, I don't require, I'll throw it off? It is required, exactly the same process. We are in the body of Jesus Christ. We are into Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ requires every believer. And every believer has to manifest to the maximum glorification of Lord, rather than representing the world with the worldly viewpoint as the people come along, thinking that they are very much brave enough, they are very much clever enough, they know what exactly the cosmos diabolicus is. One of the moron I met yesterday, he tells to me, if you are not able to lie for 300 times, then the inner man will not keep quiet, and for him the inner man is Satan. This is what the logic they get, and he is a Christian. They say, your whole sin nature doesn't allow you. If it doesn't sin by seeking lies, your whole sin nature doesn't keep quiet. From where did he learn that theology? From where did he learn that reasoning? The worldly viewpoint. Even he is a believer in the Lord. And every believer has to be made perfect and complete by the true work of a pastor teacher in educating them to the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that they can know what is the operative power of enabled men to rightly divide the word of the Lord and to rightly apply to their soul and activate it so that they can work to the every thought getting captivity into Christ and live a walk that is really glorifying unto the Lord. So the body cannot say, I can not require that one kidney as well, I can survive. No, it will never. Exactly, every believer has been required. A pastor, teacher, evangelist, administration, help, mercy. But a pastor, teacher must not strive for pure money. Ministry is not for money. Or ministry is not for anything which you can think you can satisfy. No. Ministry is for pure dealing with the word of the Lord and accurately representing the truth. As we are members of one body, we need to work effectively in the calling where the Lord has called. And what for that? To the building up of glory in Christ, not for any other thing. Even unbelievers work out NGOs in this world, but Christian NGOs is not for to be equivalent with unbeliever NGO. Christian NGOs are to be thorough in doctrine, so that the unbelievers who can come and join to this Christian organization, they could learn what exactly is Christ, and without Christ, what it is. We are not promoting one religion. We are giving them the freedom of the thought when they can get the truth. The truth, the principality, what they can witness through your life with a holy manner of walk. Not just witnessing through lips will work out. Witnessing through life is required, dear brethren. And why is it not that you need to go for number one priority for doctrine? Because... You, according to your own volition, either you are going reversionism or you are going into the discipline which Lord has kept. If your volition is past you to know the truth, the Lord will provide you the truth and the truth will set you the free. Your true freedom comes when you learn the truth, the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And there is no true freedom if you don't learn the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You will just waste a life, a life that is lie. 
And then of the day you will wake up to realize to be faithful to Lord, but you will never be faithful to Lord. No way. Either you can be satisfied with the walk the walking in life in Christ. You have gone, you have lost. Therefore, the body approach as well tells to you that there is no way you can lose your salvation. There is no way that you can lose out your security. You have been eternally secure. The Greek tense tells, the inheritance approach tells, that is what we have an inheritance that is undefiled and kept for us pure. And we have the sovereignty approach that God's decision itself is to keep us forever, Jude 24, to keep us not just forever, but thoughts for the And He will keep us in such kind of a way that there is nothing that can really distract you. And we have the sealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, dear brethren, when we have such kind of a great assurance, why we need to still walk according to the terms and conditions of this world? The worldly terms and conditions which really gets you nothing but good and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, ponder over these things. The wind is very strong. I know this tape made a lot of disturbance because of the wind, but we shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. Sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.